It's a hot day in June, and a locomotive is off the rails and on the ground at Norfolk Southern's Inman Yard in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the second derailment I've recorded in this area of the yard this month. Another engine went off the rails at the crossover here on Saturday, June 4th, 2022. In an odd coincidence, the locomotive that we'll be focusing on in this video, NS6217, can be seen working behind the derailed Kansas City Southern engine. I'm still waiting for the findings of the investigation into the June 4th derailment to be posted on the Federal Railroad Administration's website. The incident we're looking at today happened on Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. I am not going to speculate on how this happened. Keep in mind, the causes of these two separate incidents may not be related. That being said, let me tell you what I observed about this derailment. First of all, the unit that's derailed, NS6217, is often coupled up to something called a slug. Slugs don't have diesel engines and rely on the mother unit that they're connected to to provide power for their traction motors. Norfolk Southern designates 6217 as an EMD ST33 ECO, or ECO. An interesting feature about this mother slug set is that it can be operated remotely. Now, I arrived at Inman at 6.05 p.m. and RJ Corman was already hard at work with its side boom tractors and an excavator. RJ Corman is well known in the rail industry for cleaning up derailments. I should mention, while I was here, it was 95 degrees, but fortunately, there was a breeze. While the crew worked on getting the locomotive back on track, NS train number 222, led by three BNSF engines, was working the yard. Triple two, over. Yes, sir. There's no doubt, Inman is a busy place. One thing worth noting about NS 6217 in its current state, besides the fact that it's derailed, is that it's got some damage here, near the cab. Its fuel tank also appears to be punctured, and it looks like the slug suffered some damage too. But at this point, the guys with RJ Corman were focused on lifting the rear of the locomotive. Meanwhile, it looks like NS-222 was finished with its work at the yard. Now, the equipment used by RJ Corman is pretty interesting. The company's side boom tractors, sometimes called sidewinders, have huge counterweights that are extended to keep them from tipping over when lifting heavy loads. These things are also used in pipe laying applications. From my vantage point, about 450 yards away, it looked like the real challenge of this job was getting 6217 out of the ditch it created when it derailed. But the men working down here were making steady progress. Look at the technique this excavator operator uses to get his machine over the rail. At this point, the tractors moved to the front of 6217 and started lifting. This was a bit of a drawn out process, but it has to be. There's a lot of weight up in the air. In this footage, you can see them lifting, then setting the locomotive down, and then repositioning their tractors. As that was happening, something interesting came across the radio. Copy that, guys. Got a spirit that's going, uh, that's going to take a detour down there at Jones for you. Going to cross over, and I'll get you rolling here in just a few minutes. Earl. Trucks like these are used to inspect the rails. Back at the derailment site, the lifting and repositioning continued. Now it was time to move the machines to the rear of the locomotive and raise it up again. As this was happening, it looked like 6217 was leaking diesel fuel. Off-road or off-highway diesel fuel is dyed red. It is not subject to state and federal excise taxes, unlike the fuel tractor trailers and other road vehicles use. At this point, the crew's plan was clear. Get the locomotive's back wheels onto the middle of the crossover here. After setting the back wheels down, the men with RJ Corman moved to the front of the engine. This entire time, it looked like workers were trying to address all that leaking fuel. 
It was close to 8 p.m. now, and it appeared this would be the final lift before 6217 was back on the rails. Meanwhile, there was activity on the main line that passes through Inman. And just like that, 6217 was rolling again too. It was being pulled out of the way by one of the tractors. Ultimately, I was out here for about two hours watching this cleanup. I don't know exactly when the crew got started, but it's still amazing how much progress they made in the amount of time I was at the yard. So now, with the sun slowly going down, it was time for the side booms to move out and track crews to move in. Like I said earlier, I do not want to speculate on the cause of this derailment. Railroads report the findings of their investigations to the FRA. As soon as those findings are released, I'll post them in the description of this video. I also don't know if there were any injuries. Let's hope everybody was okay. You know, watching the folks who clean up accidents like this one is pretty interesting. They work safely and are really efficient. Anyway, that's it for this video, but expect to follow up once I learn more information about both the derailments at Inman Yard that I just showed you. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.